What is going on guys, welcome to Gump's Videos, my name is indeed Kyle Gumper, and today I'll be reviewing Umbrella Academy. So this is a Dark Horse property, which is not very well known compared to Marvel and DC, but the only thing that they're really known for in the common eye is Hellboy. So I'm really excited to see that they're still producing some stuff, getting some of their characters out there, and Umbrella Academy is just one of the few things that they have under their belt, and I am pleased to say that this show is amazing. I will keep it to spoiler free stuff for the first portion. I'll let you guys know when I get to spoilers. But if you have not watched this show, it is amazing. It's a great spin on uh, characters with superpowers and stuff like that. It's The best way I could describe it is that the storytelling is a lot like Watchmen. And I could see that there were some inspirations with that. And if Watchmen is not your style, just still give it a chance. Because I know it's a love-hate relationship with Watchmen. I wasn't a fan of it, uh, but I still love the show, so you might as well. The one thing I would like to really emphasize on why the show works so well is definitely because of the writing and the pacing of the story. It kind of just drops us into the situation with subtle hints of like things from the past, and it, it does it in the right way where it's not pretentious, annoying, or like takes away from the story. The flashbacks are there to kind of push the story forward. So if this was just them as kids and then the second half was them as adults, the show would have been so slow and boring. But it does a really smart thing in kind of pacing things out. Like, okay, what does the audience need to know from their past? Okay, we'll take that and we'll put it into this episode when they kind of, we kind of expose that. It does a good thing with that. And it's never too much with the flashbacks. Like... I think per episode, there's only 10 episodes, which is another thing they do really well, is that I think, I'm going to say there there's like three or four flashbacks, and they're never that long either, but they always serve a purpose, and it always doesn't feel forced. It never felt forced. It didn't attract from the story at hand in the present day, and the flowing of the flashbacks were really good. It was done at the right time, never felt too long, never felt too short, but it gave us just the right amount of information, and then just left it. Unlike shows like, oh, for example, Arrow, they kind of, like, cut the story away. They're just like, oh, this has nothing to do with the story of what you're watching right now. We'll kind of just put it in your face. This, the flashbacks always served a purpose. And, like I said, they never gave away too much or gave away too little. It was just enough to keep me uh, wanting to go back, which is smart writing, which I really, really enjoyed. And for a show, for Netflix... The visual effects were astounding. There was a couple times where I could tell that it was a TV budget. Specifically, there was, I would say, there was a couple effects in the final episode. I was like, okay, the grand scheme of things, it looked good, but there's a couple things here and there that looked a little TV budgety. But that's fine. The fact that it looked as good as it did was insane to me. The, the b Between the powers, the backdrops and shit like that, the show looked amazing visually and coloring wise and I don't talk a lot about color on the show because I'm not a color guy and I, I try not to not alienate my, my viewers because a lot of them are not film film fans like making it the art and shit like that but I wanted to talk about the coloring in this film there's a, a color schematic that I love so much that few films and TV shows do which is blue and orange and this show had a lot of that a lot of blue and a lot of orange in the final episode there was a lot of purple saying that things were coming full circle. This is my, my filmmaker side coming uh, coming to light, guys. But I thought that it looked visually stunning, and I loved the coloring in this film a lot. And I just, it was amazing. I'm glad they actually had good color on the show when they could have just made it bland. At first, I thought this was just going to be a dark, dreary show uh, that was just like, oh, life sucks and stuff like that. But, like, the more you watch the show, like most shows like this, you see where they're coming from. But it is not pretentious. You actually feel for these characters being kind of dicky. Because you see where everyone's coming from. Including the douchebag father. The father is kind of a D-bag. And as the show goes along, you kind of see where he was coming from. And why he was put in his shoes. This man had an impossible task. But he did what he thought was right. And at the end of the day, you can see why he was kind of a douche to these seven kids. Now I'm going to get into a little bit more spoiler territory. So if you have not watched it, please, please watch it. I think you all will really enjoy it. Now the one thing that I want to say that um, I thought was kind of ripping off on the uh, Dark Phoenix story 
that was Vanya, uh, Vanya's storyline. It seemed very Dark Phoenixy, like she's got this power beyond everybody's comprehension. So they try to lock it away, and then the Beast comes out. It's very X Men Three. Um, it didn't bother me. I just wish they did a little bit something different. You know, like it, it just came off as like a copy and paste with a very minor spin on it. One's telekinetic. One can, you know, get her power from sound. I don't understand her powers fully because they didn't, like, her powers didn't even come into the picture until, like, the last three episodes of the show. But the only thing that they really made clear is that her powers channel through the uh, sound, so she's, like, sound wave or some shit like that. But her power was so powerful that she can literally destroy the world. But yet again, very X-Men, Dark phoenix -y, you know, the Dark Phoenix storyline and all that other happy shit. I just wish there was something a little bit different on it. It's not a major complaint. It's just the fact that I wish they did a little something different on it. And the other thing that was my biggest negative, I'm going to get into more positives after this, but the one other thing that was kind of a pretty big negative was the ending. Um, they The whole show is about time travel and shit like that. And I usually don't like time travels in my movies or TV shows unless it's implemented well. Like... X-Men Days of Future Past. I love the way they implemented time travel into that. But this, the entire show was done brilliantly and I loved it. But one thing I was afraid of the entire time was that they were going to use it as a cop-out. And they used it as a cop-out at the very end. So the ending, the last five minutes, the grand finale of the show was very anticlimactic. The apocalypse is happening and then they just time travel to God knows where, and then the uh, credits roll. In a way, I was happy with that. In a way, I was unhappy with that. I was unhappy because they used time travel as a gimmick to get out of their fucking shitty situation. And it's a good thing because it didn't just feel like it had a wrap with a tiny bow on it and just like, oh, look, it's everything's pretty and happy again. Because a lot of shows tend to do that, and it's very... I won't say anticlimactic, but it's very unsatisfying to think, like, oh, at the end of the show that everything's going to be fine. The entire time I was watching this, I was like, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. So it was interesting to see that he still went with the route that the apocalypse happened, but it's kind of trashy the fact that, you know, that they used time travel to get out of there. Now, what does that mean for season two? I don't know. It could mean that they're going to be stuck in the apocalypse world as a family. I, I don't know. I just wish they did something a little bit more creative instead of using time travel as a gimmick to get out of their shitty situation. Now, getting back to more positives, I loved a lot of the characters. The acting was really splendid, especially on Vanya's part. Um, the entire time, she's actually an X-Man. I'm talking a lot about X-Men on the show, but like, she's actually an X-Man. I forget what movie she's on, but I'm pretty sure she's in X-Men 3. I think she's the one that can walk through walls, if I'm not mistaken. Please, please, please remind me in the, in the comment section down below. But her acting was incredible from the constant pain and sorrow and just regret and sadness and despair in her eyes was very, very impactful. I really liked her acting. Um, there was only one or two times where I thought she was just phoning it in or she was kind of tired. Um, it was more of a... Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was when she went like super killer frost mode like from the Flash show when her eyes went blue. I feel like there was one or two times where I was like, eh, could have been a little bit better. But other than that, her acting was incredible, especially from the entire cast. Not one time that I was, I was like, ugh. Yikes, bro. Actually, that's not true. Luther, uh, number one, he, I wouldn't say he was bad at acting. It's just nothing impressive, nothing that grounded me with him. Every time he was trying to get into an emotional scene, it just seemed like, you know what I mean? It just, it didn't feel natural. It just felt like he was reading a script. But other than that, everybody had a really, really, really good role. It had a good, good acting chops, and I'm really impressed with the show overall. So that will do with my review of the Umbrella Academy, guys. If you have any thoughts, comment down below. If I, there was something that you wanted to hear my opinions on, make sure you comment down below so I can cover it there. I have Twitter, Instagram, Gumps underscore videos. Go find me there for latest news and updates on my channel, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that crap. Later, and goodbye.